urinate if someone answers. Sorry? Yeah, that's a uh, thank you for your intelligent response, my friend. Okay. But that's the question we all need to ask. Why is it? Why is it that atheism has risen a lot more? Why is that? Our kids, they go into the science lessons and they're told, oh, you're just an animal, you're just an accident. They go into the physics lesson, oh, you came from an explosion. And all of our kids are walking around saying, is there any meaning? Is there any purpose? Does anybody love me? I'm sorry, I've been silent for long enough, but it is. Atheism is ruining our society. It is, it's destroying our society. And Brian Cox and Richard Dawkins, they might look like nice, educated people, but they're spewing out rubbish. Sorry? But they're spewing out rubbish to the masses. Millions of people are hearing this, that there's no God and that no one loves them. What happened to the days when you used to be taught in schools that God loved you, that he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross? Do you know what the difference is between an atheist and a Christian? Okay, I'm a Christian now, and I believe that God created the world, that he loves you, that he, he put purpose and value in every single one of your life, and he sent Jesus to die on a cross. But the atheists believe that everything came from God, that there's no value, there's no purpose. And if you take that to its logical conclusion, well, the logical thing is that the, the dog book that you stepped on last week is just as valuable as the person who is staring back into the mirror every day. Now, if you look on this board here, everyone going by, we've got the six most hated people to walk on planet Earth. I wonder if anyone knows who number two is. That's Ted Bundy, we've got Chairman Mao, we've got the Moors killers. These are wicked, wicked people. And I'm going to do a social experiment now. We're going to do something a little bit interesting. Are you ready for it? Okay. Everyone now take a look to your left. Everyone take a look to your right. Take a mental picture of everyone who's standing here right now. Because in a moment's time, I'm going to reveal number six. And I guarantee that at least one person will walk off when I turn number six over. Because you hate this person more than all of these people put together. But if you do walk off, you do a favour for me. It was said about this person that they hated me without a reason. So as you walk off, you just do a favour and say, what is the reason why I don't like this person? Are you ready for it? about this man because if you can't do that then I'm right all along that you do not want to think about this man in two minutes of your time. Okay, I'm married, I've got a wife, right? I love my wife to pieces, but do you think that I've ever made my wife cry? What do you think I've ever made my wife cry? I have, okay? Now let me ask you a question. Have you ever made another person on planet Earth cry? Have you hurt someone? So if I say that I'm a sinner, and I say that you're a sinner, would you be able to agree with that? Have you seen this fist here? No, no. Would you think this fist have ever hit anyone before? What do you think? Okay, they have, okay? These eyes, do you think these eyes have ever looked at anything they shouldn't have? What do you think? They have, but now ask me this. Am I going to heaven? No, I am, I'll tell you why. There's only two types of people that get to heaven. Perfect people and forgiven people. Now is anyone going by perfect? But not are we, but every single one of us can be forgiven. Why? Because 2,000 years ago, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, came into this world. You know they beat him, don't you? They spat on him. They put a crown of thorns on his head and they nailed him to a cross. He hung there, dying there on that cross so that you could be forgiven. Because the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. Without Jesus, none of us have any hope beyond the grave. And that same Jesus rose from the grave, dying there for all of us. I hope you can see this. I'm not your enemy, this street preacher. Here's the street preacher. Oh, And as a friend, let me put one final challenge out. I want to speak to the atheist for one moment now. I'm going to finish in one minute time. One final challenge to the atheist, to the skeptic. What would you think of me now if I said to you, Harry Potter is a terrible book? What would you think of me? If I said Harry Potter is the worst book in the world, what would you think of me? You'd agree, okay? What if I said Harry Potter is a terrible book, but I've never read it before? What would you think of me then? Please say, man, this is an end-maker judgment. Please.
please don't ever say the Bible's a load of rubbish without reading it first. And right now, in front of you, I'm going to offer you a portion of the Bible for free. If anyone wants it, come and take it from my hands. Don't be shy. If you want to take it, come and take it.